Today, we're going to build a character in Free League's massively popular fantasy title Dragon Bane. Dragon Bane, which is a re release of the Swedish game Drakar och Demoner that came out during the 80s, promises both mirth and mayhem. So bring out your favorite pen, your dice, and character sheet because we're gonna dive right in. Before I start building a new character in a system that I'm not familiar with, I usually think of big concepts that would be fun to play in that particular world. Dragonbane is a classic fantasy world set in medieval-ish times, so knowing that, I've decided that I would like to create an honorable older man with a big, big weapon who's fought for a noble cause for most of his adult life. He should be experienced, strong, and humble. A natural leader and a generous lover. A hero. Or so everyone thinks. So, the first thing we'll do is picking a kin. There are six playable kins. Human, halfling, dwarf, elf, mallard, and wolfkin. All of these have interesting characteristics and backgrounds. They also have innate abilities, which gives your character a special boon. For example, the halfling is hard to catch because they are so teeny tiny. I've decided I'm gonna go with a dwarf for my character, and I'm gonna name him Andred. The dwarf's innate ability is unforgiving. It means that Andred gets a boon whenever he attacks someone who's wronged him in the past. Next up, we have to figure out what our characters can actually do. And that's where profession comes in. It basically decides what type of skills and abilities your character will bring to the table. There are 10 professions in the base game. Artisan, Bard, Fighter, Hunter, Knight, Mage, Mariner, Merchant, Scholar, and Thief. They have different skills and can serve a party in different ways. Since I wanted to play a noble hero, I've decided to go with a knight, a retired knight. But why did he leave? Perhaps he lost faith in the noble cause that he was serving. Or perhaps he did something unforgivable and was banished from his order. Perhaps he slept with his superior's wife and a massive scandal followed. His superior's sister. So okay, okay, cool. Every profession will have a key attribute, skills, and a heroic ability which is a special ability that will give your character specific advantages and benefits in the game. You can also pick a nickname for your character that is tied to your character's profession, appearance or personality. Kingslayer, Wormtongue, Strider, you get it. Since I already have an idea about Andred shaping up in my head, I'm going to go with Bloodhand. Andred Bloodhand, because I've decided that he killed someone with his bare hands. Blood hands. Just kidding, he strangled them. And now it's finally time to break out the dice and get into the nitty gritty numbers. Yay! Math! Your character will have six base attributes that informs how, well, how good they are. These six attributes are strength, constitution, agility, intelligence, willpower, and charisma. Each attribute will have a score between 3 and 18. The higher, the better. These scores are determined by a number of things, but everyone has a base score, and that's what we're about to figure out now. Roll four d6s and remove the lowest number. The sum of the remaining three will give you a score. Assign that score to an attribute and then do that again until every attribute has a score. But there's a bit of a gamble here. You have to assign your score to an attribute as you roll it, and you can't go back and change it if you happen to get a higher score later. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that right now. Come on, roll high. God damn it. Let's fill out the rest of the sheet. Certain aspects of your character, like their age, will have an impact on their stats. Head to page 24 and 25 in the rules book for the tables on age and derived ratings. I envision Android Bloodhand to be quite senior, still capable and strong, but approaching the winter of his life, if you will. So his age category will be old. This means his strength, agility, and constitution attributes will be lower, but his intelligence and willpower will be higher. As a dwarf, his movement is quite slow and impacted by his agility score, but he's strong, so he gets a hefty damage bonus. His hit points are equal to his constitution, and his willpower is equal to well, his willpower. Skills are important as they determine how effectively you can perform certain actions during the game. 
Every character can try any of the skills in the game, but how good their chances of succeeding are depends on attribute and whether they are trained in it or not. Luckily for us, our old dwarf is starting with the maximum amount of trained skills due to his age. Six of these skills need to be selected from those listed under our profession. The other six I get to choose freely. So the knight's trained skills are beast lore, hammers, myths and legends, performance, persuasion, riding, spears and swords. Additionally, I'm going to choose healing, bushcraft, acrobatics, sneaking, bluffing and axes. You can read up on these skills on page 31 in the rulebook. The base chance of a skill is determined by the attribute level of that specific skill, and the trained skills are twice the base chance. On page 25, there's a table to see what your base chance would be. So, for example, acrobatics. The base chance is 4, based on our agility score, and since it's a trained skill for us, it's times 2. So, the total is 8. Unless you want to run around naked and penniless into the adventure, which I typically do not recommend, you need to carry some gear. You need to write down on your sheet what you're carrying, otherwise you do not have it with you. The profession will give you a list of items that you can choose from as your starting gear. You may select one of the three sets of the items listed. And as I have this vision that Andrew Bloodhand is a bit brutal, I'm going to go for the Broadsword Morningstar set. Eventually I would love for him to get a massive axe, but for now um, this will do. I'm going to write down a short version of Daniel Craig but with a massive grey beard. And that's his appearance. And for weakness, well... He carries the nickname Bloodhand for a reason. There's this cold rage that boils within him, not suitable for an honorable knight. And one day he snapped, perhaps defending someone he loved. Maybe, considering his memento is a small golden wedding band on his finger that he occasionally looks down at with sorrow in his eyes. I guess I will have to play this man to find out more about his mysterious past. And that's it, we now have the very base draft of our first Dragon Bane character. You can of course continue to work on the background and how you would like to portray your character in terms of mannerisms, voice, accent. Basically, it's time to start roleplaying. Thank you for watching and enjoy your game.